some drugs. Slow down your breathing. You're not in an aerobics class. My breathing. How about some Demerol? Take the edge off the contractions? Oh, yes. Oh, God, that'd be great. I'd really like some of that. But uh, give me a lot of it so that it doesn't wear off in the middle of the birth. And, and give me more than you usually give women because I think maybe I'm in a little bit more pain than most of your patients. How long is this going to take to kick in? Be sure and give me enough that it'll last and last. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, thank you a really lot. I come out of the store, the homeless guy comes up to me. He goes, I haven't eaten in five days. Well, you're not getting this. <laughs> I didn't say it, but I thought it. I haven't eaten in five days, what's that like? <laughs> I went three hours once, but that was just a bad waiter. sister's wedding. I'm FBI, I don't respect nothing. that you leave at once, sir. 
You are breaking and entering. <laughs> Dry up, Dursley, you great prune. <laughs> Mr. General Secretary, though my pronunciation may give you difficulty, dovayai no provayai. Trust, but verify. <laughs> you repeat that at every meeting. into a bar. Joan Rivers is the bartender. He sees a sign over the bar that reads, cheese sandwich, $1.50. Hand $10. He says to Joan Rivers, are you the one that gives the hand Joan says, yes, I am. He says, well, wash your hands. I want a cheese sandwich. <laughs>
I'm glad you're here so we can get this all straightened out. Would you like a cup of tea? You got any coffee? Coffee? Yeah, yeah coffee. No, I don't drink coffee. Yeah, you don't drink coffee? How about instant coffee? No, I don't have... You don't have any instant coffee? <laughs> well, I don't normally... Who doesn't have instant coffee? I don't. You buy a jar of Folgers crystals, you put it in a cupboard, you forget about it. And later on, when you need it, it's there. It lasts forever. It's freeze-dried. Freeze-dried crystals. Really, I'll have to remember that. You took this book out in 1971. Yes, and I returned it in 1971. Yeah, 71. That was my first year on the job. Bad year for libraries. Bad year for America. Hippies burning library cards. Abby Hoffman telling everybody to steal books. I don't judge a man by the length of his hair, the kind of music he listens to. Rock was never my bag. But you put on a pair of shoes when you walk into the New York Public Library, fella. <laughs> to do at three o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> I go out for a quart of milk. I come home and find my son treating his body like it was an amusement park. <laughs> ma. Don't give me ma. It's a good thing I didn't hit the table. I could have cracked my head open. Well, people can hear you. Too bad you can't do that for a living. <laughs> You'd be very successful at it. Club. Ricochet out there off of Jack Tatum and into the man of the year, Franco Harris's hands. Here's the miracle of all miracles. And I don't even know a song to sing. Oh, I'm a not catch you smiling. Johnny Fever, and I am burning up in here. What? We all in critical condition, babies. But you can tell me where it hurts, because I got the healing prescription here from the big KRP musical medicine cabinet. Now, I am talking about your 50,000 watt intensive care unit, babies. So just sit right down, relax, open your ears real wide, and say, give it to me straight, doctor. I can take it. Like that farm life? Milking cows? I don't have a farm. <laughs> no? Margarita thought you live on some kind of farm. You bust up a made man's place. You kill some of his guys. You take his eye. 
Jesus, Joe, you took his eye. Barbed wire, wasn't it? That's disgusting. You always were the crazy one. Not anymore. Yeah, I heard. You're living the American dream. You really bought into it, didn't you? As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Cause I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. But I ain't never crossed a man that didn't deserve it. Me be treated like a punk, you know. for over eight years. I shall force someone to take the body away from him. Then Johnny will really hit those microphones and those cameras with blood all over him, fighting off anyone who tries to help him, defending America even if it means his own death, rallying a nation of television viewers into hysteria to sweep us up into the White House with powers that will make martial law seem like anarchy. Too much love drives a man insane. Karen! Where's the stuff that I left, Karen? I flushed it down the toilet. You what? What was I supposed to do? They were all over the house. Karen, that was worth $60,000. I need that money. That's all we got. What was I supposed to do? They Karen! Were, they, weren't, they were in everything. That's all the money that we had, Karen. I was dependent on that. Why did you do that? I had to. Karen, they, were, they were going to find it. Karen, they would have never they found, found it. it. I swear to you, Henry. I swear to Henry. They would have found it. Oh, no. Why did you do that? Why?
He shoveled coal to make a poor man's dollar. something i owe you nothing if you carried that bag a million miles you did what you were supposed to do because you brought me into this world and from that day you owed me everything you could ever do for me like i will owe my son if i ever have another but you don't own me you can't tell me when or where i'm out of line or try to get me to live my life according to your rules you don't even know what I am, Dad. You don't know who I am. You don't know how I feel, what I think.
Rodney, when I first meet him, I'm in a comedy club in San Diego, and he comes in, I don't know him, and he goes, man, I don't know how I'm doing it. I'm supposed to be in a spa, and I'm doing no coke, no booze, no pot, no pills. And I'm like, this guy's fascinating. <laughs> and then he said, I've seen you on TV, man. You're funny, man. You got a Jew head. You know what that means? You're fucked. You're fucked. You can't stop thinking. You're doing jokes all day long. You're fucked. And I'm like, I got a new friend. He gets me. and I have been friends for a long time, but I know in my heart that I've always needed you more than you've ever needed me. And I'll miss our time together more than I can say. But you know what? There will be a new day and eventually a new year. And when the upcoming winter gives way to spring, oh, rest assured, once again, it will be time for Dodger baseball. So this is Vin Scully wishing you a very pleasant good afternoon wherever you may be. Ebola guy. He's got like a chemical imbalance. He needs to be on medication. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's after Jerry now. <laughs> Kramer. He's what? He's joking. He's after you? No. Why is he after you? He's not after me. Morty, do you hear this? Some crazy guy is after Jerry. I'll make a few phone calls. <laughs> Who are you going to call? What are you worrying about? I want to know what you did to this guy that he's after you. I didn't do anything. Well, you must have done something. No, he just doesn't like me. Doesn't like you? How could anyone not like you? You know, it seems impossible. Does it? It's true. No, it isn't. It's not true. You're a wonderful, wonderful boy. Everybody likes you. It's impossible not to like you. Impossible. about Jimmy. You gotta watch out for him. He's a good earner, but he's wild. Takes too many chances. No, I know that. I know Jimmy. You think I would take chances like Jimmy? And Tommy, he's a good kid, too, but he's crazy. He's a cowboy. He's got too much to prove. No, I know. You that. gotta watch out for kids like this. Yeah, I know what they are. I only use them for certain things. Believe Listen, me, you don't have I to worry. I ain't gonna get fucked like Gribbs. You understand? Gribbs is 70 years old and the fucking guy's gonna die in prison. I don't need that. So I'm warning everybody. Everybody. Could be my son, could be anybody. Gribbs got 20 years just for saying hello to some who was sneaking behind his back selling junk. I don't need that. Ain't gonna happen to me. You understand? Uh huh. You know that you're only out early because I got you a job. Yeah. And I don't need this heat. You understand that? Uh huh. And you see anybody around with this, you're gonna tell me, right? Yeah. That means anybody. Yeah? yeah.
And finally, how proud when I see all the young women who are making and reporting the news. If I did anything to help that happen, that's my legacy. So now, having had this amazing career, how can I just walk away and say goodbye? This way, from the bottom of my heart to all of you with whom I have worked and to all of you who have watched and been at my side for so many years, I can say thank you.